fed up with garages diagnosing a fault and replacing a part, but the fault's still there. I'm Tammy Neon. Let me show you the correct way to diagnose faults on my YouTube channel. This is a Skoda Fabia 1.2 THP. The AA diagnosed it with a temperature sensor issue. Went into a local garage, they changed it, this little part here, and it's still got the issues, which is why it's here. Time to break out the diagnostics. Diagnostics. Look for Skoda. Okay, I'm just going to have a quick look at the report. We've got the active static engine coolant temperature sensor, and we've also got passive sporadic misfire on cylinder two. But when I was driving it, it is way more than sporadic. It's pretty constant. I've got passive sporadic load signal and engine control unit. That'll be the misfire. I've got some air conditioning faults, but I'm not really that interested in those ones. And I've got one for the radio, but I'm not really interested in that either. These are the ones we need to look at. The engine coolant temperature sensor and the misfire. The three codes are 16502, 17766, and 16686. Now interestingly, my temperature sensor and my ignition circuit both say they've got a short circuit to ground. So we may be chasing an earth. Time to open the bonnet. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to check is this bolt here. It looks like it's got a bit of corrosion on it. So check this earth. This is where the coil packs are kept. And then this wire here, this one goes to the temperature sensor. It kind of looks like somebody's already been in it. Whilst I'm cleaning up the earth, I'm also going to move everything round. As my issue's on number two, I'm going to move the plug to cylinder one, and I'm going to move the coil pack to cylinder three. By moving them around, it'll tell me whether or not it's a component issue or a wiring issue. If the fault's moved, it's a component issue, but if it stayed exactly the same, it'll be the wiring. It's a smart move to mark them as she removes them, ensuring she knows where they originated. With a well thought out plan in hand, Tammy now needs to remove the plug from the cam sensor Next, she can carefully extract the coil packs from the cylinders. These coil packs play a critical role in delivering an electrical charge to the spark plugs. Fortunately, this is a minor issue that can be easily resolved with a quick clean before reattaching it. With those components out of the way, she can swiftly remove the spark plugs from cylinders one and two. Reinstalling them with the precision of a pro takes just a minute or two. The coil packs are interchangeable, provided you've mastered the art of dealing with Volkswagen's locking clips. They can be repositioned effortlessly before securing them back into the wiring harness and reconnecting them to the spark plugs, a gentle tap on the top ensures they're securely seated. Now it's time to address the earth wire, clean it up before bolting it back in place. This meticulous process helps ensure the engine continues to run smoothly. Hey Tammy. Don't forget the cam sensor plug, otherwise the car won't start. With that all swapped round, what I need to do is clear the fault codes, start the engine, and then rerun the diagnostics to see whether the fault codes have moved or whether they've cleared entirely. Quick erase. That has cleared the fault codes in the engine. I now need to turn the ignition off, turn the engine on, and let it run for 30 seconds before running the diagnostics again. Okay, well, the misfire's still there, so let's just go see whether it's moved to a different place. Trouble codes. I just quickly re-ran the same test and the fault code's back, so we've definitely got a misfire on cylinder two. It's not the plug and it's not the coil pack. One last test I can do is to swap out an injector. 
I couldn't do this the first time because it was a three cylinder engine. Well folks, it's time to swap out these injectors. They're hanging out at the back of the engine, which is mighty convenient. To kick things off, say goodbye to the vacuum pipe. Then it's a two-step dance with those Torx retaining screws. And hey, presto, a quick lever swiftly pops out the whole injection rail. Before we venture any further, you gotta unplug those electrical connectors. And because Volkswagen make the worst clips of any car maker, be careful. If they don't break, then we're good. After that, it's time to give those two injector retaining clips a gentle nudge and set them free. It's all part of the injector misadventure. I've got a nifty trick for you to smoothly remove those injectors without causing any harm. Grab yourself a trusty screwdriver and gently slide it under the plastic plug. Apply just a smidge of pressure. Tammy's all set to perform a swift injector swap between numbers one and two. Putting them back is just as easy, folks. Simply slide the injectors in. Reattach those retaining clips. Gently tap the injector rail back into its groove and secure it with the two trusty Torx bolts. But here's the kicker. Tread carefully because these bolts screw right into the plastic manifold. No need to go overboard with the tightening or you'll be facing a world of hurt. Lastly, don't forget to pop the vacuum pipe back into place. Once that's done, fire up the engine and let's see if our misfire troubles have been sent packing. I've swapped the coil packs, I've swapped the plugs, I've swapped the injectors and we still have exactly the same issue on cylinder two. The next thing to check is going to be the wiring. If you're enjoying my automotive adventures, please click like and subscribe and leave a comment and I'll get back to you. The misfire was on cylinder two, so we swapped all the components around putting the plug in cylinder one and the coil pack in cylinder three. The fault didn't go, so we swapped the injectors between one and two, but the fault was still there, so now it's time to look at the wiring. I'm gonna start my electrical testing. Click on my earth, turn on my voltmeter to resistance ohms, and check the earth, which is the brown wire. Well, that's good. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is check our five volt supply. So go turn the ignition on. Well, that's interesting. It started off at four volts and the voltage is just slowly dropping off. What that shows me is that I have a good earth, but I do have a problem with the five volt reference signal. The next thing I need to do is check the continuity to the ECU. We could have a fault in the ECU, but that's unlikely because we do only have a fault with one sensor. Now, it's time to remove the air filter assembly to access the ECU. First, the fresh air pipe is soon dealt with its onto the vacuum pipe. Again, after loosening the pipe clip, a swift, decisive pull. Don't worry, it looks like a struggle. But squeezing it out through a hole that's too small is a job Tammy has done before. With the air filter out the way, I can get to the ECU to check the continuity of the wiring. But here, it's got an anti-tamper bar, which I'm going to need to remove first. The best way to remove the anti-tamper bolts is with a disc cutter, and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards so you can see how I got it out. Be careful using power tools. So the important thing with these is that you cut straight through the head and into the thread, because that releases the pressure on it. And then with a pair of pliers, you can grab it, get a good grip, and undo it. With the cage removed, Tammy needs to release the ECU wiring clips before pulling it out. Let's see ECU you out. I looked up online and it's pin 64 that I need to test to check for continuity. The eagle-eyed of you will have noticed it was pin 60 and 74. However, Tammy is going by the pictures and it's the top corner pin so she won't get it wrong. It's handy these plugs are close together. Tammy manages to slip both ends in one hand, leaving the other free to probe the ends of the wires. You can always get a friend to help at this point. Well, maybe not him. That shows us that I do have an issue with continuity because the meter was all over the place. It didn't go to zero. What I now need to do is look for any obvious damage in the wiring loom. On most cars, you'll have two or three plugs that go into the ECU. You'll have one that goes to the car and you'll have one that goes to the engine. I know on this one, this is my piece of loom that's got the issue to my problem plug. I'm going to un unclip this length of loom, but I can already see where my problem is. I can tell the loom's rubbed here, 
And if I pull it away, you can actually see the green corrosion here. And underneath, I can actually feel a hole. <laughs> Yep. Wow, look at the state of that. It's a wonder it ran at all. Now I need to cut open the loom, root out the damaged wires and solder in some new wire. I'm going to need to remove these two clips and this sheath. And then I'm going to need to cut open the loom to expose all the wires. Once they're all exposed, I'll be able to check to see which ones are damaged and splice in a bit of new wire and cover it with heat shrink. And then when I put it back in, I'm gonna route the cable slightly differently so it doesn't rub on the same spot. It's time to get cutting, splicing, and splitting to remove all the outer covering before skillfully wielding a blade to cut through the tightly fitting tape, revealing the inner workings of our wiring loom and its concealed mysteries. So I've got some damage on this earth wire just here. I've got some damage on this twisted blue and brown wire here which we know it's blue and brown going to this plug, so it's probably that one. I've also got some really bad damage on this green wire, and then a little bit of damage on this red and yellow wire too. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to chop open five wires. I've separated out the bad wires here and take the rest of the loom back so it's out of my way. Now I just need to cut through where the damage is. Cut some heat shrink and slide it onto the wires. I fitted the heat shrink before I stripped the wires because it just makes it easier. Hopefully you can see, but these wires inside are black and that's where the water's got in, so I'm gonna have to scrape it up a bit to clean it so I can solve it. Tammy is using a gas-powered soldering iron to make good these damaged wires, warming the wire first before applying just enough solder to make a good join. With the wiring repairs all soldered, it's time to get the heat shrink cover. A gentle flame should do the trick, causing the tube to seal tight on the loom. That's my loom repaired. I am going to just put the ECU back on and check everything works before I tape it all back up. Yes! <laughs> As you can see, it's running fine. Finally, Tammy can tape up the loom, protecting the wires from dirt and water. I've moved the clip from here to here to stop this happening again. Clearing the fault codes for a fresh test, Tammy needs to run the engine for 30 seconds or more before rechecking the system. And that's the legend, folks. No fault codes detected. This little Skoda is all ready to go home.